Bible tells us que that Jesus Christ is at the door. Apocalypse, the Apocalypse, chapter one, Apocalypse chapter one. There will be rumors of war. There will be pestilence. There will be famine. There will be death. Oh, good morning. My name's Dan Roy. Welcome. So, let's see. I'm a vegetarian, an anarchist, an environmentalist. So, of course, I'm naturally very cynical of things like capitalism, the government, middle-aged white men, that sort of thing. When I first heard about the Y2K bug, I thought, hey, maybe this is something that could be the end to everything that I already hate. Maybe this would be a wonderful thing. But I really didn't know much about it. So I thought, I better go ask some people about this Y2K thing. Luckily, there's a Y2K uh, sort of a expert who lives right downstairs in my building. So let's go downstairs and talk to this expert right now. Hi, I'm Dan. I live on the ninth floor. Who are you? Uh, my name is Doug Legacy and I've worked as the director of research for the year 2000 research group in Ottawa. Okay, so right now it's 1999. When did people realize that this might be a problem? It was in the 80s, it was in the mid 80s or so where, where the first article appeared in a technology magazine about the bug. Uh, but people didn't realize how big the job was. Well, surely our leaders are on top of this, knowing, knowing uh, everything we know about our leaders. <laughs> We're in a situation now where leaders don't mean as much as they did 50 years ago. There hasn't been a lot of, you know, large-scale wars, which is where the leaders so usually show up. Okay, so what's going to happen to us? What's a worst-case scenario? Uh, the power systems break down. Uh, people aren't able to call uh, 911 for assistance. Uh, the criminal element realizes that and hits the streets. So as a, as a computer expert yourself, are you making any personal preparations? I have a location where uh, I will be able to personally uh, support a group of 20 to 30 people for about three months if necessary. Really? Well, it's within <laughs> driving distance. So, you've, you've got everything set up. You're not worried about Y2K, the year 2000. You have a cottage, it's supplied with wood, you've got a whole bunch of canned food up there, maybe you've got dried beans and dried rice, and a few chocolate bars just in case. All you have to do is drive up to the cottage in case anything shows its ugly head that you might not want to deal with. We go to the gas station to gas up the car. Well, everything has computer chips in it, from the camera that we're using to film this documentary to the gas pumps that pump the gas into your automobile. Well, that's okay. You've got gas in the car already. It's already filled up. So the fact that these pumps aren't working doesn't matter to you because you've you planned ahead. However, everybody else who didn't plan like you did is coming here to get gas, but nothing's coming out. The pumps are empty. Well, what do you care? You're on your way up to the cottage. You get out on the highway, there's a lot of traffic. Worse than that, there's a whole bunch of stalled cars. Why are they stalled? Because people couldn't get gas. Where does that leave you? In an automobile full of gas on a highway that's clogged with dead cars. At the, at the best, slow moving traffic, but at the worst, you've got to deal with a whole bunch of people in automobiles that didn't plan ahead. We're here in a neighborhood park looking for a man named John, a friend of a friend of a friend. And John is apparently stocking up for the worst case scenario of Y2K. He might be called a survivalist, if you will. Now we have this special hidden camera device. You can hardly even see where the camera is myself. And we're gonna be looking for John in this playground. That's where he's agreed through Dave to meet with us. So, uh, look around here. Hopefully he won't notice that he's, he's on camera. Let's go look for him, shall we? As far as I know, he's never been on camera before. So, here somewhere. What's that? Well, this person looks. This is interesting. This could be the first video we have of John. Hello! My name. I'm a friend of Dave's. 
Uh, my name's John. Oh, How are you? John, you must be Dan. That's I am. It's good to meet you. Thanks. Um, so thanks first for agreeing to talk with us today. No problem. And, uh, let's see. So Dave tells us that that you're uh, that you kind of believe that <clears throat> the Y2K situation will be a lot worse than people think it will be. Uh, what I'm what I'm anticipating is that uh, when Y2K uh, occurs after December 31st. Um, there will, there will be trouble. There'll be, there's going to be looting. There's going to be hoarding. There's going to be uh, general general badness going on. So I think it's good to to be prepared for the worst. Can you tell me why it is that you that you have your face covered on camera? Well, the reason's pretty simple. Uh, it's it's a fact that uh, because I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to have food. I'm going to have uh, weapons and water and so forth. Uh, most other people aren't. Uh, if my face was to be seen and people were to know that I was prepared, I would become a target. Uh, and I don't want that. I don't want to become a target of looters. I see. Okay. I was wondering, could you said that you have a, quite a stockpile of stuff. Could could we be privy to see that? Uh, you can, but for security reasons, I, uh, I, I'd i like to blindfold you uh, before I take you over there so, so you wouldn't be able to tell anyone where I live. Well, sure thing. No problem. Okay, this is my place. Uh, I want to request a couple of things off you. First of all, I know you're recording me. I'm not sure why you have the camera hidden in the bag. Please feel free to take it out. Uh, second of all, uh, I'm gonna. I have to have a shower, so I'm gonna close the blinds. I request that you please don't look out the window to get a bearing on where you are. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stash. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you what I have prepared for Y2K. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting your shower. Let's go see your stuff. No problem. I just got off work and I was feeling a little bit uh, grubby. So, okay. Watch the mache, please. Okay. Uh, I find the kitchen is the best place to store my Y2K supplies because uh, I live in a small apartment and. Uh, Really, there's no other place to keep my stuff. So I'll show you what I have that I think is going to... John, what's this. that helmet doing there? What's that for? Oh, uh, that's that's in case the North Koreans... Uh, well, let's just talk about Y2K for now, okay? Um, all right. I'll start over on this side with what I call my dry goods. They're all dry goods, essentially, but I guess my barter goods. Um, after Y2K, I assume that uh, certain things like toothpaste and soap and toilet paper will be hard to come by. So I've stocked up on those items, uh, not only for my personal use, but to trade for such things as cigarettes and chocolate. Um, I got some candles uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, coffee whitener. And some canned goods, some, some chicken chicken stew, and some vitamin C tablets, which a lot of people haven't thought about. But, uh, you know, when the computer bugs hit, it's going to hit the third world the hardest. And down where they grow the, the fruit, like bananas and, and oranges in Paraguay or Uruguay or Mexico or wherever they grow them, the trains aren't going to be running with this stuff. So it's good to have some vitamin C pills. And uh, various other items, sugar, of course. John, I see that you have a lot of things that need to be cooked. You have rice and beans that need hot water. And I was just wondering, how are you going to get power in case of a Y2K meltdown? How will you heat your food or boil water or even heat your apartment? OK, I, I see that I, I, Dave told me you're a pretty good guy. But I see what I'm dealing with is someone that uh, prefers to come up with negatives rather than positives. So uh, watch my mache.